Hey, what is going on guys? It is your boy Hobo back again. It's September 2018. You know what that means. You know it's NFL football season. And we are back in two days on Thursday Night Football. I'm going to get right into this thing. I'm super excited for the season to start. I cannot explain to you guys how crazy these past few months have been with everything in my life. So that explains the lack of uploading. But you didn't come here for that. You came here for NFL football predictions. So let's get right into the nitty gritty. Thursday Night Football on NBC. The Atlanta Falcons will take on the Philadelphia Eagles. So a couple main points that I want to uh, point out to you guys right off the bat would be are the Eagles going to be suffering from a Super Bowl hangover? I know the uh, the Falcons, their opponents in this game, did suffer from a real bad Super Bowl hangover. I know that they lost in pretty heartbreaking fashion, but they came out the very next year and stunk up the joint and looked like a completely flip-reverse team than they did the regular season of the previous year. So it's going to be a little, uh, little interesting to see if the Eagles, with the same starting quarterback and virtually the same team, if they can beat that same team that beat Belichick and Brady's Patriots in the Super Bowl just this past February, and, and if they can transfer that over onto the field this Thursday against the Atlanta Falcons. Of course, they're going to raise their first ever Super Bowl banner, so there's going to be electricity in the air. The momentum's going to be with the Fal or uh, excuse me, with the Eagles. And they're going to be facing an Atlanta football team here that really is underrated. Um, everybody, I think, including myself, is not giving them a chance in the NFC. And I, I do think that there are a, a few people who are counting on them to be sleepers to win the entire NFC and come out uh, as the number one or number two seed. And I, honest to God, don't imagine that happening in any, in any reality. But the, the Eagles do look like the better team in this game. But my number one problem with the Philadelphia Eagles is Nick Foles. The way he looked in the preseason, and before you attack me, I know it's just the preseason, and it really doesn't mean much how well Nick Foles played in the preseason, but he looked like crap. Just to be frank, he looked like a completely different quarterback than we saw in the playoffs last year including the game he played against Atlanta, which he wasn't at his peak yet, but uh, that, that game against Atlanta last year in the playoffs, he did look good enough to, of course, propel them to a win, which they did, and then they went off to rattle on two more victories or, or however many it was uh, to make it to the Super Bowl and win that game. So, and then I guess, yeah, that's another good point that I just brought up to myself just now. The Falcons, they're still, the last game they played was against these Eagles, and it, they didn't necessarily get their asses handed to them, but they could have easily won that game had it been for better play between Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. Uh, and it all boils down to that to me in this game, the quarterback play. If Nick Foles looks like he does, or looks like he did in the preseason, I'm going to go Falcons all the way. If he looks like he how he did in the postseason, then I'm going to go with the, the Eagles all the way. And on the flip side, if Matt Ryan looks anything like he did last year, then I think that the Falcons have a chance in this game. But it's going to really come down to uh, the, the defense, I, I would think, if Atlanta's defense can capitalize on a kind of shaky-looking Nick Foles, then I feel like Atlanta could have the upper edge. But just, you know, considering the home field advantage, raising your first Super Bowl banner, I got to take the Eagles in this game as much as it pains me to say that. But I don't honestly see how the Atlanta Falcons can go into that building, quiet that crowd, beat the defending Super Bowl champions. So I got to take the Eagles in this one. And then next up, kicking off the Sunday wave of games, we have the Buffalo Bills taking on the Baltimore Ravens. So, I, I, I put down some bullet points for every one of the games here this week. And this one's a little interesting to me because you're going to have a couple of quarterback debates that are going to get people hot and excited in both those fan bases. If you're a Bills fan, I think you probably want Josh Allen starting this game. But Nathan Peterman's going to be your guy at least for week one. And if he has a terrible performance, throws eight picks or however bad he does or however bad he's looked in the past if you put Josh Allen in is it just in garbage time 
does, is he really even going to have a chance to look any good? And that's going to be a real big factor because I don't think that this Ravens defense is good enough to really say or to, to use as a crutch if Allen or Peterman goes out and have a bad game. You can't say, oh, well, that Ravens defense is real good. I think they're okay. I think they're a perfectly average defense. I don't think that they're a top five unit in the AFC. But uh, I do think that their defense, I would probably give the nudge over the Bills defense. Uh, I'm just a, I'm a real big fan of Micah Hyde, don't get me wrong, but um, I, I don't like the Bills this year. I don't like their team. Uh, I know that you got a couple guys playing with chips on their shoulder on that squad, but Joe Flacco, I mean, the most least interested quarterback not named Jay Cutler in the entire league, I think he might have a chip or two on his shoulder. You know, Lamar Jackson got picked with the last pick in the first round. They, I believe they traded up to get him. I could be wrong. But uh, Lamar Jackson certainly looks like the front runner to take Joe's job if Joe Flacco goes out and has a bad day, kind of like Nate Peterman. And I think that the the real the real underlying story here that's kind of brewing under the surface is Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. Uh, if these teams meet in the next coming years, will we will we see these two guys going up against each other? And if so, who's going to be better? But uh, I guess we can only really focus on what's going to happen on Sunday. And, you know, I'm going to go with the uh, with the Buffalo Bills in this game. I know that I just got done dredging them through the mud. But I don't particularly like either of these squads going into this year. But I think that the Bills, you know, I don't know. I don't know too much about either of these teams to really give a crap. So <laughs> I'm just going to take the Bills. Because I really got no reason to pick the Ravens. I think that they're just garbage and I think it has a lot to do with Joe Flacco that was the least educated pick I've ever given in my life but moving on Jaguars at Giants I'm gonna be at this game so I'm gonna have so much fun I'm, I'm honestly probably not even gonna pay attention to the rest of the games this week because I'm, I, I'm gonna be at one so you know I don't know it's gonna be fun this is gonna be my first of a few games this year I know I went to one last year we got beat real bad but this year you know, I'm expecting good things for this Giants team. And uh, I guess that the after this, this game is over, the question will ring. Should the Giants have taken Sam Darnold? Or was it a good idea to take Saquon Barkley? And I guess we'll find out. Because I love Barkley to death. I think that he's great. I have a, a signed jersey of him hanging up in a frame in my room. Because I think he's that kind of transcendental player who can carry this Giants team for the next 10 years and lead the league in rushing in a few and have consistent 1,000-yard uh, years. And now that I've said that, I probably jinxed him. He's going to be a huge bust. But, you know, shit happens. Excuse my French. Uh, I think that I'm going to probably mute that. Yeah, we'll see if I can remember. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that question is going to ring true for a lot of years if this this Giants team doesn't perform well. I know a lot of people are going to go, well, why did you pick Barkley when he had XYZ quarterback on the board? But I think it's better that the Giants pick Barkley, extend the life of Eli Manning, and, you know, the reworked offensive line and a defense that actually is healthy and they, they can play to potential. I think that we've got a good squad, and I think that my pick is not based on my fandom, but it's based on my next point, which is the Jaguars, I believe in my heart of hearts, will come crashing back down to earth. Blake Bortles is not an AFC Championship quarterback. Let's face it, he's not. There's a reason why at the beginning of last year, there was talk that the Giants might trade Eli Manning to be the, the starter there in Jacksonville, or at the very least mentor Blake. And there's a reason for that. And that's because Eli Manning is a two-time Super Bowl winning MVP quarterback, and he's pretty good for all the flack that he gets from the less educated football fans. And then there's Blake Bortles, who's not a good quarterback. And to top that off, he's got nobody to throw to in this game. He really doesn't. I mean, just look up and down that roster. The wide receivers are dead. The tight end position is dead. I actually don't even know who plays tight end for them. Could be Mercedes Lewis. He could have retired. I truly don't care. <laughs> Even though Alec Ogletree can't cover a man wearing a tight end number to save his life. But we're just going to forget that for a minute. So, I mean, I'm going to pick the Giants in this game. 
I, as an honest take a step back from that fandom pick I gotta pick the Giants I just think that you know I've been reading all the things leading into this week one game where people are like the Giants are gonna win the Giants are gonna win I keep thinking to myself well how these are the same Jaguars that went down to the wire with Tom Brady the guy who the very next two weeks after that would go on to throw a Super Bowl record amount of yards in a game they went toe to toe with him and it came down to a couple BS calls on why they lost that game but then I, I started to think to myself, well, they have to, they, they, they can't be that good, right? There's no way that they can be that same team that they were last year. There's no way. And the, the first point that comes to my mind is they change their uniforms. Whenever a team does that, they're destined to fail. Uh, but on a more serious note, I, yeah, I just think the Jags will come crashing down to earth. And I'm going to give this one to the Giants because I love, I love the Giants. And I don't want to see them lose when I'm there. I really don't. Not again. Not after that 51 to 17 we had last year. That was real bad. So I'm going with the Giants. Next up, Buccaneers at Saints. Got a couple points here, as I do for all the games, like I've mentioned. Uh, can the Saints really ride Drew Brees into the future? How many years does Drew Brees have left? Three? Four, maybe? Can he really be that kind of guy to get the Saints back to the Super Bowl and win? I mean, the AFC is loaded. They got a, a, a few really, really good teams in that in that conference that I think are much better than the New Orleans Saints. And to top that off, I don't even think the Saints can make it to the Super Bowl in the NFC. It, it, it's a matter of getting out of your own conference before you go up against the next conference in the Super Bowl. And I, f I feel like the Rams, the Vikings, uh, are just a couple of the, the good teams in this conference that are going to pose a really big challenge to the Saints. And, you know, I, I don't know because I believe Drew Brees is starting to decline. I believe it. I can't see it, but I believe it. I think that he's being helped out by having a really, really talented team around him. And I think that's uh, really boosting him up and kind of putting on this facade that he's still a great quarterback. And I feel like at some point we're going to see it. Drew Brees going to come back down to earth, look like an, a regular quarterback. I mean, I got to admit, I think Drew Brees is one of the best ever. Is he the best ever? No, clearly not. There's still a guy named Aaron Rodgers on this earth. That point will be debated, but that's fine. But yeah, I I, uh, I really have my questions about Drew Brees going into this year. I'm probably the only one who does, because I don't really pay attention to the media going into a football year or between the weeks. I kind of wa watch every game. Maybe not this week, I won't. I'll probably try to get back when I get home and watch some of them, watch at least the highlights. And then I make my own assumptions based off what I've seen because I know what I'm watching when I watch a football game. I know what to look for. I watch offensive lines. I watch, you know, I watch the footwork. I watch where a quarterback's looking. I watch all that. I watch it all because I'm a smart football fan and I don't try to toot my own horn, but, you know, I know what to look for in a football game. And I just have this tick that Drew Brees is not going to have the same kind of wow 5,000 yard 4,000 yard year that he had last year or the year before that or however many years he's gone in a row but the Buccaneers have their own set of problems that are just way out there they're a terrible terrible football team I I'm sorry if you're a Buccaneers fan but your team sucks just gonna throw that out there you were gonna be one of the worst teams in the league this year probably the laughing stock of the NFL Jameis Winston suspended this game. I, I don't freaking know how long that's going to last, but what a stupid guy Jameis Winston is. Um, suspended again. Again. Like First it was the whole crab leg thing. Now this. Whatever. Ryan Fitzpatrick's going to play. I don't think he's any good. I think he had, what, one kind of good year with the Jets where they beat my Giants, but whatever. That's neither here nor there, but I, I obviously going to take. I obviously am going to take the Saints in this game because the, the Buccaneers are just bad. <laughs> There's really no way to, to 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 dance around that. They're just a bad team. So next up, we have one of the more intriguing matchups of the weekend: the Houston Texans taking on the New England Patriots. So I I pose the same question here to the Patriots as I did to the Eagles: Is Super Bowl hangover going to be something that they're going to have to worry about? I know normally the loser of a Super Bowl doesn't come away with hangover, but the Falcons came away with hangover. I believe that the Panthers came away with hangover. And I feel like uh, the Broncos, when they lost to the Seahawks, came away with a bunch of hangover. 
I feel like it's kind of a thing where if you lose in the big game, you take a step back. No, and, and how big that, that step is is really uh, just a testament to how good your team is fundamentally. And I know the Patriots have Belichick, Brady, Gronk, Edelman, and whoever plays on defense and whoever else catches the football. I don't know any of their names, and I really don't care. But uh, I, and then there's that other thing that I have as kind of a slash point to break off of this. Brady and Belichick, what's that relationship like? Are they going to continue to be great business partners? Or is kind of that personal stuff that we heard all about in the offseason going to bleed in and kind of rear its ugly head and cause more distractions for the Patriots than need be? I mean, I guess we'll see. But um, on the opposite side of the football, Deshaun Watson comes back. My I, my second favorite quarterback in all of football. My favorite college quarterback of all time. Played for my college football team. I own his jersey. It's hanging up on my wall. <clears throat> I absolutely love Deshaun Watson. I think that he will end up being a great quarterback. But there is a question to be posed. Coming off such a serious knee injury like that. Is it a possibility that he ends up looking more like a one-year wonder than the franchise player for the Houston Texans? I mean, there's a possibility. Do I want to explore it? Hell no, because I love him. But it's really a, a serious issue that you're going to have to think about if you're a Texans fan. Uh, going into the future, can Watson rebound accordingly to his knee injury? And I know I don't, I don't put a lot of stock into the preseason, but he didn't look great in the preseason. I'm just going to throw that out there. He didn't play very much, but he didn't look spectacular. And I know not a lot of guys do, and that's fine. But I still wanted to see a little bit more out of Deshaun in the preseason. Didn't get to see what I wanted. This is just an honest take. And th th there's a serious possibility that knee injury could still be bothering him. Or at least he's scared of it. But uh, this, this game right here is a rematch from one of the funnest games we had all of last year. Where the Patriots came out and just barely won it by a tip of the Brandon Cooks. And now you don't have Brandon Cooks. You don't have Danny Amendola. And I feel like that could well I mean you get Julian Edelman back but I don't think he's a great player I'm going to be honest I think he's more he is a slot wide receiver who gets the option to play number one because there's nobody else around him that's any good it's the Antonio Brown syndrome fight me if you want Steelers fans I don't care your number one guy is a glorified slot wide receiver who's only great because that's the position they put him in excuse me and that game last year between these two teams was real fun, real fun, real great. And the Patriots came away by a tiptoe, and I feel like that tiptoe is going to be in the favor of the Texans this time around. I, th I think the Texans will come away with this upset win here in Week One, and kind of be and kind of stun the Patriots. You know, like uh, when Superman gets killed by Doomsday, and everybody's like, "Oh my God, did that just happened!" And you're going to say, "Yeah, it did." It really did. And Patriots fans are going to be like, well, is this the end? And then, no, it's not going to be the end because you're still going to go 11-5 and five and make the playoffs or whatever and lead the AFC. I don't care. But the Texans, they're a, they're a playoff contender. They've got a solid foundation. They're getting better. Uh, I don't think they've gotten any worse since last year. And the only reason why they were real bad last year was because there was no Deshaun Watson. I'm going to be frank with you. And if Deshaun is healthy, then they have a good team for the year. I'm picking the Texans in this game. Houston, let's go. They're my favorite AFC team. Let's make some things happen over there. Then the 49ers at the Vikings. I've got two bullet points there, the exact same thing, but for each team. Is Kirk Cousins the savior of the Minnesota Vikings? And is Jimmy Garoppolo the savior of the San Francisco 49ers? These are two real, real hefty questions. Each of these fan bases are going to have to weigh. Are their teams complete with these quarterbacks now? I think that the 49ers still have a, a more holes that they need to fill. Sure, on paper they look like a, a fundamentally sound football team. I think their defense is going to be a lot better than a lot of people are going to give them credit for. Uh, <clears throat> I think Kyle Shanahan knows how to build a team, and I think that he knows what he's doing. And I think that he's going to be able, being an offensive mind, to kind of get Garoppolo into gear and make this 49er offense look really good. You know, they did beat the Jaguars last year, who <clears throat> were one of the best teams in all of the AFC. And then there's the Minnesota Vikings, who many people believe are a quarterback away from the Super Bowl. 
I personally don't think that, and I think that Kirk Cousins is a step down from Case Keenum. Well, last year's Case Keenum anyway, because I thought Case was phenomenal last year. Unbelievable. And I think Kirk Cousins is grossly overpaid, but I do feel good for him that he got his money. Don't get me wrong. But I also, excuse me, don't think that he's the the answer for them long term at quarterback. And that could come into the 49ers' favor as I actually do predict the 49ers to kind of sneak away with an upset victory here. Uh, kind of pull one over on the Vikings. Um, I, 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 th I think the Vikings are going to be like that big bad team that everybody's going to be like, oh my god, I don't want to play the Vikings. And then the 49ers are going to be like, well, no, they're human. We can beat them. And so can anybody else. And that's what it's going to take like with the Patriots or with the Vikings, these teams that look phenomenal on paper. you got to humanize them a little bit, and then that takes their mystique away. And then when you play them, you're like, oh, well, I've already seen such and such team beat them, and they're like 1-3, and three, so I can totally do that. And I think the 49ers, they, they, I think that they have a good game plan in, in the works here to beat this Viking team. And it's going to take a lot of really clean play, no penalties, uh, moving the chains consistently, long drives, uh, and not turning the football over. And that's pretty much basic fundamental football. And the 49ers are going to have to play it to a T to beat the Vikings because their defense is pretty good. So, yeah, I'm going to take the 49ers in this game. Titans at Dolphins. Uh, I've got one bullet point here. Ryan Tannehill comes back. Is he really going to make a difference for this Dolphin team? I don't think they're any good. I think that they're the Buccaneers of the AFC. I think they're real, real bad. Uh, I don't see any real shining star on this Dolphin team that makes me think, well, you know, there's a chance they can make the wild card. I don't see it. I really like the Titans this year. I think Marcus Mariota's got a huge chip on his shoulder. He's going to be playing for that contract money. And, um, you know, that's not contract time quite yet. But you always got to try to, you know, keep up a good reputation to earn that money. And I think that uh, Marcus Mariota is going to come out here, play a really good game, and lead his Titans to a win. Bengals at Colts. <laughs> is this weird? But they just played in week four of the preseason, and they're opening up the season against each other. That doesn't make any sense. I know they played in Cincy last week, but they're playing in Indy this week. None of this makes any sense to me. It does. <laughs> Honestly, that's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard about in my entire life. But that has nothing to do with the game on Sunday. Um, is Andy Dalton back to his 20, 2016 form, I believe it was, where they looked really good and they were like undefeated forever, and then they just fell apart, and Vontez Burfick happened, and then they crushed my hopes and dreams of the Bengals winning the Super Bowl, but yeah, I think that they're going to be an okay team, probably kind of middle of the pack, 8-8, eight and eight. maybe if you sneak a win in there, you go 9-10, and 10, or 10-9, uh, and nine, I'm sorry. Or what? 10, 10, 10 and 6. What am I thinking? It's been a long day. But um, the Colts, I think, are super bad. I think Andrew Luck will not make a lick of difference for this poor, sorry excuse of a football team. I think T.Y. Hilton's overrated. I think he's overpaid. I think Andrew Luck's way overrated, way overpaid. And I think that the Colts are just a garbage team. I'm not going to be shy about saying this. I hate the Indianapolis Colts. I hate them from their stupid blue uniforms to the stupid horseshoe to Lucas Oil Stadium to Andrew Luck looking like a gremlin on crack to... I don't know. I don't know what it is. I hate the Colts. I'm picking the Bengals just to be quick and short about it. So Steelers at Browns. Baker Mayfield's not going to start. But are the Browns still for real even with Tyrod Taylor starting? I have a, a great assumption that the Browns will win at least six games this year. And a lot of that was in part to me thinking Baker was going to play at least significant time this year. But if he doesn't, then I don't know because I, I don't know how Tyrod's going to play. But uh, I really like Baker Mayfield. And if he ends up playing any significant stretch of time this season, I feel like the Browns are for real. Maybe not playoff for real. But I think that they're real enough to where you can start looking at them and you don't point your finger and laugh anymore. I think that they're going to be a team that people start to go, okay, you know, I can see this team coming together and I think that they're going to be 
uh, a real nice, well-rounded football team in the near future. I think they're a free agent or two and a good draft signing or two away from becoming a really good football team. I'm going to be completely honest. I've been saying that for years and they keep underwhelming me, but I think this year's a year I finally get it right. And then the Steelers don't have Le'Veon Bell. Is he going to play the first week of the season? Is he even going to step foot in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to have contract talks or whatever the hell his his problem is? I, I, I hate Le'Veon Bell. I think that he's a drama queen. And I'm a Giants fan. I've dealt with the whole Odell Beckham thing. And I think Le'Veon Bell is a complete diva. All this talk about money and getting paid and basketball players and... I don't care. You suck it up. You sign a franchise tag. You become one of the highest paid backs in the league. And if you don't like it, you go to another place. That'll pay you the money. That's what everybody does. Kirk Cousins didn't want to sign the franchise tag, become one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the league. So he went somewhere that would make him the highest paid quarterback in the league and give him guaranteed money. Simple as that. You don't have to stick in a city because of loyalty, quote unquote. Go pay or go play where they pay. If winning's not a priority, and I don't believe it is for Le'Veon Bell, Go smoke your dope and go get your money. Simple as that. Any team stupid enough to pay Le'Veon Bell the maximum amount or, or break the running back market I think is an idiot. I think they're a fool. I think that the running backs, the way they're starting to come out of these drafts flying off the shelves like hotcakes, being good to great, I think it's a, a really stupid idea to, to sign a, what is he, 28-year-old running back to a four-year, however many millions of dollars deal think that's a dumb idea I think he's overrated but that's a story for another day Ben Roethlisberger is his age is his body deteriorating gonna be a problem for the Steelers I think so uh you know I don't really have a problem with the Steelers I I just don't like them I guess and uh, Ben Roethlisberger I don't think is anything spectacular I think last year really humanized them because people are like oh Big Ben he's so great but no he's just like any other quarterback in the league He'll have his good days. He'll have his really bad days. And that's evident throughout all the quarterbacks. And, like, Brady's had bad days. Peyton Manning's had bad days. I'm sure Montana, Elway, Favre, you know, all the greats have had their bad days. Aaron Rodgers had bad days. And and it's just a – it is what it is. But Ben Roethlisberger, I think, is going to really start to look like a below-average quarterback this year. And people are going to try to cover it up with the big old masking tape disguised as a terrible towel which should really just describe their team uh terrible and i don't think they're going to be anything spectacular they'll probably make the playoffs because that's what they do uh but i don't think they're going to be anything where you go wow look at the steelers they're great good for them i'm going to go with the browns in this game yeah i said it firing my cylinder firing on all cylinders after that hot take about Le'Veon bell and ben roethlisberger i'm picking the browns there you go. Chiefs at Chargers. Is Patrick Mahomes really that much better than Kirk Cousins to A, you had a draft up to get him last year, and B, where you decided to just, or excuse me, not Kirk Cousins. I meant Alex Smith. That was a typo in my error. I'm reading my cheat sheet. But uh, to where you allow Alex Smith to just walk away like that and ship him off, well, not walk away because you traded him. <laughs> I'm getting my stuff mixed up now, but... You trade them away. I don't. I don't really get it. I don't get like what you're getting out of Pat Mahomes. I haven't seen anything out of him that I particularly like. I mean, I know he's got the big arm. He can move. That's about it. I mean, I'm excited to see what they do, but I don't think that they're as good as the Chargers team that they're gonna face. And I think that they might finally figure it out. They couldn't figure it out with LaDainian friggin' Tomlinson and, and Phillip Rivers. They couldn't figure it out with Jay Cutler. Wait, did he play for them? No, he played for the Broncos. Uh, they, they just, they, I don't get it. I do not get what has been the, the bane or the Achilles heel for the Chargers. Is it Phillip Rivers? I don't know. But this year is going to be the year where they have to prove that they're a good football team because last year they started off on five to beat the Giants and they became a good team just like that <laughs> who would have thought but I, I'm going to put a lot of eggs into the Chargers basket here and say they're going to be a pretty good football team so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Chargers I'm going to go with them don't you worry about me Buster I know what I'm doing 
Seahawks at Broncos. This is a Super Bowl rematch from a few years ago. But now both teams are like horrible. I mean, the Broncos have Von Miller, the Seahawks have Russell Wilson. You end it right there. I mean, Case Keenum, I think he'll come back down to earth. I think uh, Emmanuel Sanders is, is pretty good, but he's old. Demarius Thomas, pretty good, but he's old. And that's what you're kind of dealing with with the Broncos. Good players, but they're on their elderly side. And I know 28, 29, it's not elderly by any means. But in football years, it is. And you're, you're, you're getting some of these players, and they're a little older. This team isn't young. Uh, they just got Paxton Lynch. I mean, the youngest player on their offense is probably either Garrett Bowles or Devontae Booker. So, I mean, I'd say good for you. You have a, a young running back who's below average and a pretty decent offensive lineman. But I don't, I don't see the Broncos being any sort of threat in the AFC West. I think it's a one-man race between the Chargers and themselves. And the Seahawks are just, I think that they're abysmal. I think the only thing that's going to keep them alive this year is Russell Wilson. Because no Legion of Boom anymore. So who's going to make the plays on a defense? Who? <laughs> be, be straight up with me. Who's going to make plays for Seattle on defense? The uh, Russell Wilson will not be able to carry this team. He just can't. His body will break down before he gets the chance to do so. It's simple, rudimentary math. And it's not really math because this is football, and I was really bad at math. This is completely different. But I, I don't even know who the hell to take in this game. I'm probably going to take the Broncos just because on paper they look better. But I think people are going to finally understand what I've been saying about the Seahawks for a few years. They're completely overrated. So I'm going to take the Broncos in this game. Next up, we have the Cowboys and the Panthers. Uh, big, big question here for Dallas. Who, who are they going to throw to? Who's receiving the football? Cole Beasley? After that? My grandmother, perhaps? Me, even? Um, Spider-Man? Peter Parker? Well, he got snapped into dust, so probably not him. He looks like Des Bri <laughs> He looks like Des Bryant and Jason Witten, just gone. Um, that was really dark. That was really dark. Also, spoiler warning for those of you who haven't seen that great movie. But seriously, who's going to catch the ball for the Cowboys? I don't think that they have anybody that's a threat. It's going to come down to, can Dak Prescott make plays? And does he rely on Ezekiel Elliott too much? This will be the year to prove it. The offensive line is going to be without Travis Frederick. Sadly, I hope him all the best. I hope he gets better. Um, but they're going to be without Travis Frederick. And that offensive line, I think, is also, like I've been saying for years, a little on the overrated side. <laughs> little on the overrated side. I know Chaz Green started, and that's what allowed Adrian Claiborne to get six sacks or whatever it was, but still, you cannot do that. You throw a running back in pass coverage. It's that easy. Um, it's not really that easy because I'm not an NFL player, so I want to know. But it's that easy when you think about it. Clearly, they didn't do that. Adrian Claiborne lit them up last year, and I think that the Panthers are just better football team than the Cowboys. But I also think that the, the Panthers are like when you polish a turd. Because everybody wants that polished turd to look like real nice and shiny. But when you look at it, it's still a turd. It's still a bad football team. And I don't think they're... like I, I've seen people go, Panthers to the Super Bowl. Panthers NFC champions. Panthers this, Panthers that. I think the Panthers are stupidly overrated. Like, ridiculously overrated to the point of absurdity. I don't think they're anything special. In the, in the excuse me in the NFC, I think Cam Newton has been overrated for a long time. I think he I think the league just didn't know how to react to him when he first came in, and that's why he was such a hot start. And it's it's like that with a lot of running quarterbacks. Colin Kaepernick, he was the same way. He came in, he led the led his team to the Super Bowl. Never was the same. And uh, Russell Wilson won a Super Bowl, went back to a Super Bowl, and hasn't even sniffed it since. And that's a, that's a big problem for these running quarterbacks because I don't think they have the arm strength. Cam Newton certainly doesn't have the arm strength to be an elite NFL quarterback. He relies on his legs, and he relies on just people being able to make plays to bail him out. And that's a big problem. And there's a reason why Cam got hit so much. It's because he doesn't have an offensive line. Like, people need to stop making and creating excuses. Cam complained, oh, hits to the head. No, it's not hits to the head. It's you're a quarterback. You're a football player. You're going to take hits. You have no offensive line. Deal with it. Even if 
you know, you don't want to throw the blame on your offensive line because you're a classy guy, which you're not. Um, as evidence to that interview he, he had last year with the woman talking about, oh, you know routes or whatever that was. That was ridiculous. But Panthers are bad. Cowboys are worse. So I'm going to take the Panthers. Redskins at Cardinals. Is AP still AD? Is Adrian Peterson still all day? Can he be the bell cow for the Washington Redskins? Can he carry the ball 25 times? Can he have 100 yards on the ground? Can he score a touchdown from any length of distance other than the one or two yard line? I guess we're going to see. Can his knee hold up? Is he going to be like this complete career renaissance version of Adrian Peterson? I don't believe so. Is he going to be this version of Adrian Peterson where we all look at him and go, yeah, you should have retired when you tore your knee. I feel like we're going to lean more towards that side. I'm not confident Adrian Peterson can run like a, a great running back once again behind this offensive line that's going to be uh, covering up Alex Smith. And that's another thing. Is Alex Smith really an, an upgrade over Kirk Cousins? I think, if anything, you get a slightly <clears throat> excuse me, worse version of Kirk Cousins because of Alex Smith's inability to throw the ball deep. And I know last year he did everything his power to shake that connotation that he cannot throw the ball deep. But he really can't. Uh, there's a reason why he was labeled the the game manager, and that's because he, he largely is a game manager. He lets his playmakers make plays, he lets his defense make plays, and then he throws the ball when he needs to, and he turns around and hands the ball off when he needs to. He's the definition of a, a game manager, and there's a reason why the 49ers, when they had Alex Smith, never won a Super Bowl, when they really should have, because they had an elite defense and a really good offense. And there's one reason they never won a Super Bowl, and his name is Alex Smith. And that's just the, the down and dirty, simple truth of it. And it's all going to come down, I think, to the way this Redskins defense plays. And they're going to have to show a lot, considering last year they were, what, 32nd in run defense. And I'm pretty sure they had a, a porous pass defense. But they're going to need to take a step up if they want to be any good this year. Luckily, they've got the Arizona Cardinals week one, and I don't think they're very much. But then when you compare the fact that they have the 32nd run defense from a year ago going up against David Johnson in his return game, there's a problem. And David Johnson may torch the Redskins for 200 yards and two or three touchdowns. We, we, don't, we don't know. Obviously, I'm not a fortune teller, but I think that could happen. And I, I don't, I'm not confident no matter which way I pick this game, but I'm going to probably just flip a coin. Heads, I'm calling heads. I don't know what I'm doing here. But I'm going to pick the Arizona Cardinals due to the fact that David Johnson's back, due to the fact they're playing at home, and due to the fact that the Redskins kind of shaking a little bit with the loss of Darius Geis, with a, a brand-new quarterback who, as I have mentioned before, is kind of a game manager. And he's not going to have to be the game manager if he wants to win this game, I believe. And he's going up against Chandler Jones, who led the NFL in sacks a year ago. And that guy graduated from my high school that I went to. So I know that he's a he's a, he's a baller. He's a baller. <clears throat> guy can go. And I'm going to pick the Cardinals in this game. I just think that they have that little bit of an edge over the Redskins here in this game. Sunday Night Football on NBC. It'll be the Green Bay Packers hosting the Chicago Bears. Point number one I have for this game, Khalil Mack. Is he going to be a difference maker? I think he's overpaid. Do I think he's overrated? Slightly. Slightly. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference for the Bears. I think the Raiders easily won this trade. Easily won this trade. They cleared up that huge glaring blob of cap space waste that is Khalil Mack. And, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers is coming back with Jimmy Graham. I know you don't have Jordy Nelson. And you've got an aging Randall Cobb. But Devontae Adams is starting to show up and ball out. Ty Montgomery might look like a serious guy to run the football. Or uh, Jamal Williams, I believe, is who they have running the football. I think their defense is starting to come together, look a little bit better than it has in years past. Still not the defense that you'd like for a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers. Um, but it's still going to be a pretty good game here, I believe. I believe. I've been saying that a lot. <laughs> but the... Uh, Another point I have is, are the Packers better or worse swapping Jordy for Jimmy? Does Jimmy Graham make that much of a difference as a tight end 
to justify signing him over retaining a guy like Jordy Nelson? I guess we'll see. I feel like the Packers wide receiver core is not in such a state of disarray as it has been with all the injuries that they've dealt with and lack of depth. I think that they're going to be well off. I think that now having a tight end is going to be a good thing for Aaron Rodgers, a really great tight end in Jimmy Graham. And if they can just run the ball, <clears throat> excuse me, if they can just run the ball even half of what any decent NFL running team could do. I don't know what I just said, but I think it made sense in my head. If the, the Packers can run the ball effectively, I think that they'll be a good team. I think that they will be. I think they'll be probably one of the front runners in the NFC. And certainly in the, in the NFC North, where it's just, I believe, a race between them and the Vikings. Whoever can pull out to a faster start, I think it'd probably win the division. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to the Packers here. I, for Aaron Rodgers' reasons, and for the fact that I think uh, the Bears team is still kind of I know they're young, I know they're they're pretty good, but I think they're still in kind of this weird shifting phase, not quite figured out an identity for themselves. I think Rodgers is going to take advantage of that. As long as he can stay away from Khalil Mack uh, I think he'll be alright. So I'm going to take the Packers. And then Monday Night Football on September 10th we have Jets at Lions, ESPN 710, PM Eastern Standard Time. Is Matt Patricia really going to bring the Patriot way, quote-unquote, as they call it, to these doomed? Detroit Lions? I mean, a lot of people are like, well, the Lions are... Yes, they are. Yes, they really are a doomed team. They've had so much talent, so much freaking talent walk through that door and then get pushed right back out of it. Calvin Johnson one of the greatest generational wide receivers we've ever seen play this game will never get the credit he deserves because he played for such a bad team and they were talented their defense was good their offense was good and they still couldn't get out of the wild card that is I believe a sign of a team wasting its potential Matt Stafford is in his ninth NFL year do something with this man let him make it to the playoffs and have a chance. Please. It's not that hard for this team to win games. I think they're talented. I really, really do. It's just going to be Ken, Matt, Patricia, and their coaching staff whip together the recipe to make this whole thing work. Because I know the Lions have had a lot of issues. A lot of issues. And their least, the least of their concerns being on the field. Um and probably their number two issue being issue being in Detroit, the city itself. That's a real, real bad dig. I apologize to anyone who lives in Detroit. But, uh, I mean, I I really wish the best for these Detroit Lions. They're like my my, my fifth favorite team. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, the Jets, is Sam Darnold the real, real deal? Or is he going to be this faux kind of, oh, look, it's... Joe Namath 2.0 kind of impersonator and then by week 8 fall apart and everybody's like well I don't know what happened it's obviously the offensive line or the receivers or the defense or the, the guy in the crowd who threw the football back after the touchdown celebration they're probably going to try to pin it somewhere else when Sam Darnold doesn't look like the guy that the tabloids have him made out to be calling him the next Broadway Joe doing all the stupid stuff that the New York media does they're really kind of dumb and uh, this game I think will go a long way and kind of pacing out Sam Darnold's steps here this first season for him. I think it's kind of a weird thing to rush him in to his first season when like the Browns are taking their time and the Bills are taking their time and the Ravens are taking their time and these teams with rookie quarterbacks are taking their time and letting their their young quarterbacks learn and get better. But I guess if the Jets are so determined that Sam Darnold is the guy the Giants passed up on they probably should rush him out there. And I don't think it's going to end up being very pretty for the Jets. So I'm going to take the Lions in this game. I don't think the Jets are ready for primetime football with a rookie quarterback. And then rounding out this week one action here in the NFL, the Los Angeles Rams at the Oakland Raiders, ESPN, 1020 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bullet number one, Khalil Mack. Everybody's going to be talking about it. I don't think it's an issue. I really don't. I think the Raiders defense has gotten better. Without that glaring kind of, oh my god, what are we going to do with Khalil Mack on our team, or on their team? I think that the everybody on the defense is going to be like, okay, I've got room to breathe now. It's not all about Khalil being a, a two, 
a, a defensive player at two positions or defensive player of the year at two positions, whatever it was. Landon Collins should have won DPOY that year anyway. But uh, without Khalil Mack there, I think everybody else is going to have a chance to shine. That offense, I'm still real concerned about that offense. And um, But the Rams, I mean, they're just they were looking like the best team in the NFC all around. It's like you look at each position on their team and you're like, how? How is this even fair that they've assembled a team like this? They've got a, a good young quarterback still in his rookie deal, and they've got a roster like that. That's unbelievable. They've got the second highest paid defensive player in NFL history on their team. And they're still one of the best looking rosters in the league. It's incredible to me. But will they live up to that offseason hype? Or will they come crashing down to earth? Kind of a uh, I flew too close to the sun thing. I got all these big name guys on my team. And Nadama and Sue and Akib Talib and... Aaron Donald and Marcus Peters and can they all coexist? I don't know. I guess we'll see. It's we're still gonna have to wait however many six more days to find that out. I'm recording this on the fourth of September. It's bleeding over into midnight now, so I guess three days, whatever you wanna or not three, uh, five days, but whatever you wanna say. But um, it's it's gonna be a very very interesting game between these two teams. Because uh, each team is really kind of trying to figure out who and what they are. You know, the Rams, you might think they have an identity, but I really think they don't. Being the star-studded Los Angeles Hollywood team. And then the Raiders, still kind of in a, in a soft rebuild with John Gruden. Both teams kind of figuring out who they are. But with that being said, i got to take the Rams. I really wholeheartedly have to take the Rams in this game. I don't see a way the Raiders win unless they pull some sort of giant miracle out of their ass. And unless I don't see that happening. I mean, I'm not a, a weird guy, but I want to put all my eggs in that basket, per se. But, yeah, that'll do it, ladies and gentlemen. That's week one in the NFL. This has taken me 50 minutes, almost 50 minutes, to get through. And uh, this is like some sort of weird catharsis for me. I feel good. Getting back into this, giving you guys my thoughts on week one in the NFL. And I can't wait to be at week one in the NFL when the Jaguars take on the Giants. So that's going to do it for me, guys. I hope to get you some exclusive content from that game. Uh, but we'll see. It's going to be uh, an interesting next few days. And hope that you guys enjoy week one of the NFL as much as I know I will. So uh, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down below. Tell me your guys' thoughts. What do you think? Uh, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let's start some educated football debate in the comment section below. I'll reply to everybody. And I might even pin your comment if you say something nice about the Giants. So that's going to do it for me, guys. It's been your boy Hobo. My voice hurts. i got to get a drink. I'll catch you guys next week for week two in the NFL.